Hey viewers, welcome to another game of the Casual Pro Gamer. Today we're doing another StarCraft 2 match, and this time between Mill for GG playing the Terran in the bottom right and TL's Lin uh, TL uh, uh, TS Linori in the bottom left playing the Protoss. So um, obviously we're going to see some workers early game and later on develop into probably strategies. Uh, well, with the uh, Marines and Marauders on the uh, one side and some gateway units on the left side. Of course, it can diversify from there and um, we are really looking forward to what these guys are coming up with. So the early uh, supply depot and pylon, the pylon right next to the base uh, because it, there is no real advantage to placing it somewhere else. Um, there is an advantage, however, to placing it right here because your uh, worker is going to only take a very short trip from where it delivers its minerals to where it, uh, you actually want the pylon to be built. And this is actually going to be a wall-off. I'm not sure if he's going to complete the wall-off because there is no uh, rush coming out and he will probably scout that before he needs the wall-off. And um, yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. So um, for now... We have uh, 12 and 12 as in the as the units and we have a little bit of lag going on but that will pass I am sure. Um, so yeah the chrono boost is uh, being used mostly on uh, on the the, uh, the probes here but he did save up a little bit of it to uh, I think get the warp gate research uh, chrono boosted but I'm not actually sure we will see that when we see it. And um, of course, uh, Chrono Boost, yeah, it um, is a very useful early game, but not a whole lot of players uh, tend to use it in the later game. Because uh, in the later game, he actually completed the wall off there. In the later game, uh, players kind of, yeah, they kind of ignore the Chrono Boost. They uh, just use it uh, every now and then, but then in uh, from like three Nexi at the same time, two or three, whatever. And they just boost all of their gateways uh, at once. But yeah, normally it's uh, it's not worth your APM in the late game. At least that's what it seems like. Because, well, that would be the only reason not to use it. If it was worth it, I'm sure that people would use it. So the scout is coming in. He, It's not going to get in. But it is going to scout this uh, uh, command center coming up. There you go. Getting the wall off. Uh, well, up. He... Um, he lifted the supply depot and made sure that uh, the probe was not going to get in. And the first zealot out now. And the zealot is going to run past this SCV, or rather the other way around. The SCV is going to run past the zealot and is going to scout the entire base, see what's up. But yeah, there's nothing surprising going on. It is just one gateway into cybernetic score. And there you have the chrono boost for that... Uh, a cybernetic score for that uh, uh, warp gate research. Of course, he uh, does have quite a bit of um, uh, chrono boost saved up by now because he can uh, chrono boost twice. And we see a bunker coming up. So the bunker is there to protect against the early zealots. Um, yeah, this stalker <laughs> going to chase the SCV all the way around the map, and this is the furthest he can get the. Stalker from his base, that's why he ran here and not back home. Even though he might have been able to save his uh, his SCV by running back home, this uh, uh, Stalker now had to run all the way to the top of the map and then all the way across the map. So that makes that uh, early pushes are kind of impossible. There's going to be a resupply pylon over here because with the warp gates you can resupply wherever you want as long as you have pylon power. And um, it seems that um, he is going for that. So, uh, three more gateways and four more gateways. Wow, actually going for a five gate here. And that is quite surprising. Because five gate is not really something you can... Uh, uh, you can actually afford because you don't have enough income to... Uh, well, to afford... Uh, well, doing that for m multiple times. It seems that uh, a third bunker is up, so this guy must have scouted that at some point. Um, let me see, I'm pretty sure I can see it like that. No, he did not scout anything. So maybe the thing is that he didn't scout anything uh, in happening over here. 
So with no expansion coming up, the only thing that uh, the Protoss can do, of course, is, well, he can do two things. He can either go for that, um, uh, well, that expansion, but then be behind on uh, uh, behind one expansion, and he can also go for a secondary solution, which um, and let's see what happens here. Yeah, he is actually going to hold off. And um, yeah, with some marines loaded here, a marines loaded here, no um, marauders yet though. He's going to put up the bunker. Yeah, the second solution uh, to that problem that uh, the Protoss was having is to just um, yeah go for an all-in rush, and that's what he chooses here. So the Terran player therefore goes for these uh, these bunkers because he knows that the only solution that well that there is. Um, that can actually defeat him would be well this one he cannot get defeated by a later base because if if you put up a base that's later than your uh, then well if the protoss would put up a base later than the terran player the terran player is still ahead so there's nothing he can do about that anyway um we are going for the repair on the bunkers obviously and <laughs> a little bit of a scout yeah so um the a Protoss player building up an army, but he is going to have to move in quickly because this, uh, yeah, this base is already paying for itself or has already paid for itself, I should say, and is now just building up extra money and still no expansion from the Protoss player. He is still just building gateway units and um, doesn't even have uh, level one. Uh, well, level 1 upgrades on anything, because he hasn't built anything except for that cybernetic score. And yeah, just going in with a 0, zero, zero uh, on everything. And that means that um, it is going to be one fight only, this game. Well, for the rest of this game. Because he either pushes this into, uh, uh, into a win, or he's going to just completely uh, get wiped out. A nice force field preventing the uh, the repairs, or at least not enabling him to repair a whole lot. And the bunkers go down, but there are SCVs to hold off this mess. And as long as the SCVs can distract, the marines can actually fire. And there are enough marines to deal with this. Some marauders in there even. Oh, only one. One marauder. But a lot of SCVs going down. Um... Yeah, actually 12 SCVs going down already. But that is not a big deal. The army cannot... Uh, well, cannot be sustained for this Protoss player. He's going to have to push in right this moment. Because if he... Uh <laughs> oh man. If he doesn't win with this push, he's going to lose. I mean, that's just as simple as that. So he's going to have to push all the way in and hope that... Um that this is going to work and more and more units are streaming in for the Protoss player but he's not going to make it as you can see still enough units there's a bunker up now with four units in it there are still units up here and as I said after this push failed which it did uh, because he couldn't kill this uh, this army plus the bunker plus uh, a command center with the army he had and he was completely out of money he uh, didn't have enough to sustain this, um, well, the flow of this this army, the incoming army that he needed, and um, yeah, he just gives up because he knows that at this point he lost, and you can see it here, 34 versus 70. Uh, he just, uh, yeah, he lost on economic ground here. 20 more harvests, well, 23 more harvests, in fact, and um, yeah, that was just too much. So anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. GG.